Unit 2 Computer Systems, Drive Configuration and Control. Okay, this session, um, our outcomes and objectives are, we're gonna start looking, uh, continue, sorry, looking at learning outcome one, which is understanding the components of computer systems. And um, the objectives of this session are to be able to identify, describe and configure IDE and SATA devices, and also to be able to set boot device priority in the BIOS. We're going to start with uh, the older technology. We're looking at IDE, which is a parallel ATA. Um, IDE, uh, Integrated Drive Electronics, um, PATA, Parallel Advanced Technology Attachment. Um, used for connecting storage devices uh, directly to the motherboard on a computer. Um, can be used for hard drives, CD, DVD, um, some old zip drives also. Um, we have a transfer rate of up to 133 megabytes per second um, and also uses a flat ribbon cable which is 40 pin. Now we use jumpers um, to configure the hardware. Um, I'm going to talk to you about jumpers in a few moments. With jumpers, it's possible to connect uh, multiple IDE drives to a computer system. Um, the drives are daisy chained using an IDE cable, um, allowing them to be joined together. However, when we connect them to the computer system, um, the computer has no idea which drive is which. Okay, um, the jumper acts as a permanent switch. Um, we're gonna have a look at some video footage shortly. Um, but the permanent switch allows us to tell the computer whether the device is a primary device, a secondary device, whether it's a master or whether it's a slave. We'll do some more of this in the classroom. Um, let's have a look at SATA then. Uh, serial advanced technology attachment. Um, as you can see, uh, we've got transfer rate of up to 600 megabytes per second, and that's coming from SATA 3. Uh, we've got small, smaller rounded cables. Instead of um, flat cables that we use on um, IDE, um, we're using small rounder cables. Um, and also there's no jumpers required. Um, no jumpers required because there's no configuration that can take place actually on the physical drive. Okay, so let's have a look then at the comparisons between IDE and SATA. Now SATA's hot swappable. What I mean by hot swappable means we can connect and disconnect the device without having to power off the system. Uh, whereas with IDE, um, that's not possible. To be able to connect a new IDE, IDE device to a computer, you need to be able to power down and switch off the computer first. Uh, with SATA, we've got smaller cables, as I mentioned before. Uh, we've got smaller round cables, um, and also which increase which increase the airflow in the inside of the computer. Um, with IDE, they're flat and obviously getting get in the way of the airflow. Um, unfortunately, with SATA devices, we tend to need um, specific drivers. That's not always the case. Uh, generally, with the newer operating systems, Windows 7, Windows 8, for example, um, all the drivers should be built in and should be ready to go. However, that isn't always the case. Some drivers need to be installed prior um, to installing the uh, hard drive, whereas IDE, they're literally plug and play. Um, no drivers are required. You plug the IDE device directly onto the motherboard and it works. Um, with SATA, we're only allowed one device per cable. Um, whereas we mentioned on, mentioned before, uh, with the IDE devices, uh, we could daisy chain. Uh, that's not possible um, with a SATA drive. Um, with a SATA drive, you're limited by the amount of drives um, by the, the, by the uh, motherboard that we're using. Um, and as I mentioned before, jumpers with SATA, um, no jumpers are required, um, therefore no configuration. All the configuration takes, part, uh, takes place in the BIOS, and I'll show you some of that later on. Whereas with IDE, we have to specify whether it's a primary device, um, a secondary device, a master, or a slave. Okay, so the speeds of IDE then, um, from five megabytes a second up to 135 megabytes a second. Now, um, in the earlier days, that was more than usable. Obviously, when we're looking at file sizes that we work with today, um, 133 megabytes per second um, isn't all that much. 
when we move on to SATA, there are three versions. Let's take a look at uh, SATA 1 first. Um, SATA 1 was obviously the, the first SATA, um, which can transfer data up to 150 megabytes per second. Uh, SATA 2 was the next, uh, where we can transfer up to 300 megabytes per second. And recently, uh, we've got the invention of SATA 3, um, which can transfer up to 600 megabytes per second. Obviously, SATA 3 is used for more uh, use for solid state drives and um, faster drives um, that are running up to 7,200 or perhaps 10,000 revs per minute. Okay, let's take a look at the IDE sockets then on an older motherboard. Okay, so we'll see to the left of the uh, memory module slots, um, we'll see two ports here. Um, the two ports are 40 pin IDE sockets. Um, these sockets allow for us to attach um, the IDE cable, uh, which attaches directly to the back of either a CD, DVD, ROM, or even a hard drive. Okay, let's take a look at the cable quickly then. Um, before we do that, you will notice at the front of the socket we have a white cutout. Now this white cutout um, allows for the key. Okay, so the cable here, let's put that in place. Um, you'll see attaches directly to it. Um, you'll see a little notch okay that allows us um, to make sure that we insert uh, the cable the correct way um, if we insert it the wrong way it's obviously not going to work um, so this cable um, connects directly into that port just here okay a little bit of resistance but give it a good give it a good shove and it attaches in directly Okay, um, now obviously the other end, which we're going to have a look at in a second, in a second um, connects directly um, to the hard drive, and we'll have a look at that now. Okay, let's take a look at the back of an IDE hard drive then. Um, as we can see uh, from left to right, um, on the left hand side we have our IDE socket, okay? That allows for us, as I mentioned before, um, to attach our cable. Um, we've already attached um, the cable to the motherboard um, in exactly the same case if you see towards the top of this connector here we have a key again um, and as before if we take a look at the cable okay my hands out of the way uh, you'll see that that key is in exactly the same place so um, as before line it up give it a good push okay and we've got the cable connected perfectly okay on the right hand side um, you'll see uh, four pins uh, those four pins um, allow for us to connect the hard drive to the power supply uh, providing power to allow the hard drive to spin uh, that's known as a uh, Molex connector um, to the left hand side of our power socket, you'll see three pins. And as we mentioned before, um, we d discuss drive configurations. Excuse me. Um, the drive configuration allows us to set the device as a master or a slave. Now in this case, you'll see we've only got six pins, okay? Some hard drives have six pins, some have eight pins. Um, and using, um, small plastic jumpers I don't know if you can see that there I'll put one on there it might be easier to see um, basically uh, a jumper is a piece of plastic with um, a metal interior and the metal interior provides uh, a permanent switch um, a jumper is used to short out to particular connections okay um, now, as we spoke about in class, um, the jumpers allow us to specify whether a device is either a primary device, a secondary device, whether it's a master or whether it's a slave. Okay, and um, typically, um, 
on our standard, on our first and probably one and only hard drive on a computer, uh, would install our operating system. Now, our operating system um, needs to be installed on the primary hard drive. Now, that primary hard drive also has to be set as master. Okay, so if we remember that primary master, our operating system always has to be installed too. So how do we set a hard drive as a primary? Now, the easy thing is, uh, we'll take a jumper, okay, and we'll pop it onto the first two pins. A little bit finickety, bear with me a second. Okay, so by popping that jumper on the first two pins um, allows us to set the hard drive as a primary device. Now, if you've only got one hard drive um, set on your computer, then that's fine. We'd set it as primary, we'd leave it there. However, if we've got multiple hard drives on the computer, um, we'd need to set... Um, the first hard drive, i.e. the one that has the operating system as the master and the second hard drive that perhaps you're going to store your data or install your applications to would need to be set as a slave. Now to set a hard drive as a slave let's get that out, okay we perhaps pop the jumper onto the second two pins, okay now one thing we've got to remember is that all hard drives are different. Um, on every hard drive you will get a diagram that identifies how to set the pin configuration to primary, uh, to master or to slave. Okay. There is a possibility that um, there's an option as cable select. Now cable select allows for us or for allow, allows the hard drive to identify itself whether it's a primary or a secondary device or a master or a slave device. Okay let's take a look at SATA connectors then on a more modern, more modern motherboard. Uh, towards the left hand side uh, you will see we have six connectors here. Um, as you can see, they're keyed in the same way that IDE is keyed. Uh, you'll see a um, sort of an L-shaped connector. Um, the L-shaped connector ensures that we connect um, the cable the correct way. So, uh, as you can see, um, the cable we've got here is somewhat flatter um, and relatively smaller than the IDE cable that we're looking at before. Obviously, um, by using uh, an IDE cable, we're going to obstruct airflow within the computer. Um, with the uh, SATA cable, it's somewhat smaller, considerably smaller in fact, um, allowing for better airflow around the system. Now, uh, pretty simple um, to connect up. Um, like I said before, L-shaped connector. Um, and literally, they plug straight onto the board. Uh, in this case, um, we've got six SATA connectors. Um, six SATA connectors allowing us to attach six uh, devices to the motherboard. So allowing us to have six storage devices, whether they're hard drives, um, CD, DVD, ROMs. Um, as before, if you remember the IDE device, we could attach multiple devices onto one channel, whereas <clears throat> in this case, um, we could one cable, one device per socket. Okay, so let's take a look at the back of a storage device. Um, we looked at the back of the hard drive, back of a hard drive on the um, other video. So um, let's take a look at the back of a CD-ROM in this case. Um, we're looking at uh, the back of a SATA DVD drive. Okay, um, on the back of the device, you'll see it's um, somewhat simpler than an ID IDE device. Uh, we'll see we've got two connectors on the back. On the left hand side um, is a slightly larger connector. Um, that larger connector allows us to connect the device 
um, to the power supply, providing power to allow the device to spin. Um, to the right hand side, we'll, we'll see a connector that's probably about a third, maybe half the size of the power connector, and that is um, to allow us to connect the data cable to the hard drive. So, as we said before, they're L shaped, so in exactly the same way, we literally just plug it in and connect straight to the motherboard. Okay, as we spoke about before, uh, we have the BIOS, the basic input output system. Um, the boot di device priorities section of the BIOS allows us to specify in which order um, that a computer will boot from a device. Okay, um, you'll see on the screenshot I have in front of me, um, our first boot device is set as removable device. Now a removable device is something that's removable obviously. Um, most cases a USB device. So if you've got a pen drive plugged in, you may be able to boot from your pen drive. Um, the second boot device is set as the CD-ROM. Um, so if there's a CD-ROM in the CD drive or in a similar case a DVD in a DVD drive, um, the computer will attempt to boot from that device before it attempts to boot from the third boot device, which in this case is a Western Digital hard drive. Um, now, these can be set up either using IDE or SATA. Um, if we're installing an, oper installing an operating system, um, we need to ensure that um, the CD-ROM that the installation files are on is set higher in the priority list um, than the hard drive. Uh, that way the PC will be able to boot directly from the CD and allow us to install the files to the SATA device, to the, to the hard drive. 